All right, guys, just coming out of temporary video making retirement just for this one video. So just need to clear my brain between uh, a complex project that I'm working on at the moment. So thought this would be a good thing to just do something different. So what I'm going to do is create a Ken Burns type slider using the native Brex nestable slider. Uh, I've seen a lot of times in forums where people suggest plugins and Worst case, they even suggest things like Revolution Slider, which is just not needed. Uh, you can do it with a little bit of CSS and, uh, and the uh, built-in native Brex slider. So we're going to start by adding a slider to the editor. There it is. I'm going to call this my Ken Burns. I'll just call it Ken Burns there. And inside the first slide, I'm just going to add an image. And we make sure that image is a figure. I've got advanced SEMA, which I'm defaulting this to figure. If you don't, it'll default to a image. You need to change it to a figure. We will use the figure because the figure puts the image inside of it, and we can use that wrapper to, um, I guess, mask the uh, the image. So when we scale it, it doesn't go outside of that that um, image. Okay, so that's the figure there, and we're going to duplicate that and just drag that into the second. And again, into the third. There we go. I'm going to use the Advanced Seamers uh, BIM Creator. They call it the Class Converter. And just hit that and create classes. That's just going to create all of these uh, class names for me without having to do too much work. Um, it's a nice little time saver there. So once you've named all of your um, elements, in fact, I might just draw Z on that uh, because I don't like the fact that I've got class names for slide numbers. This is just a slide. That's just a slide. So we want those to just be all slides. I'm just going to run that again. Create my classes. And now this is just a slide, not a slide one. Okay, there we go. Now, what we're going to do is go to our slide. And on the slide, we're going to make sure, which I think it is by default, our position set to relative and we want to set our isolation to isolate and the reason we're doing that is because we're going to put the a negative uh, index on the z index on the image and we know it to disappear behind the color so on the image now i'm going to so just select an image uh, i don't know we'll select this building here and we want to make sure our class is selected here we're going to set our, our object fit to cover uh, anything else we need to sit there? I don't think we need to set anything else on that page. You can set the size there if you want to. Uh, we'll go into our layout. I'm going to set our position to absolute. We're going to set our Z index to minus one to put it behind our button and our title. I'm going to set the left, bottom, top, and our right and top to zero. Uh, I wish there was just an inset here, but we have to do that in the UI using these. So there we go in the background, and we want to set our height and width to 100% so that it fills the space of the slide above it. Okay, so there's our basics done, right? We're then going to go to the settings for our slider. I'm going to leave the pagination on for the moment, and we're going to go to the options, and we're going to set this to be a fading slide, so it fades from one to the next. Uh, we're going to set the height on that to be a fixed value of 500 px. Uh, we're going to set the speed in milliseconds, so the time it takes to do the transition. We want to see a nice slow transition, we're going to do 7000, which is 7 seconds. Okay. Then we're going to do autoplay, and we want to set that number to be the same. So we want it to be 7000, exactly the same. So it takes the same amount of time to transition, as there is a delay before the next one comes in. Okay. Now, because we've used fade, if you use loop, when it gets to the last item, it loops around to the beginning. If you use slide or fade, it just ends on the last one and you have to go backwards. So we want to use uh, fade, but we want it to rewind when it gets to the end. And we're not going to put any time on that because we want it to rewind straight away. Okay. And that is the basics done. So now if we save that, uh, I'm just going to change these images here. So I'll select another one, or maybe there's an island. And for this one, we'll select the tiger. 
and we have a basic example of a fading image. So I can just use my mouse here and drag, or I can use these navigation dots. We're not going to set autoplay on it yet. Actually, I will turn it on uh, just up here. Let me go into the autoplay. Oh, actually, we have got autoplay on, sorry. Um, over seven seconds. Yes. Great. All right. Now, what we need to do is a couple of settings that Bricks does not expose here that we need to uh, change. So we need to use the custom option, but we, the easiest way to do that is to get the brick settings for what we've set here first. So let's we'll save that, make sure we're on the current settings. The way you do that is you go to the inspector, look for the slide, and go right up the top here. There's the slide there, and we've got the data splide, which is a JSON object of all of our settings, which we need for splide. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm using a Notepad++ here. And the reason I use that is very, very uh, featured. It's cross-platform, so with your PC or Mac, you can use this. There's also some online tools you can use for formatting your JSON. But what we've seen here is it's escaped our double quotes. So we need to copy that, uh, that escape double quote. The Control A or Option A to select everything here. And then we're going to do a Control F or Option F. Paste the dot, uh, sorry, add and QOT semicolon. We want to replace that with a double quote. Replace all. That's replaced all of our double quotes. Uh, escape with actual double quotes. Now you're going to need to add a plugin to uh, Notepad++ for this. But if you go to plugins and install the JSON viewer, uh, then you can format your JSON so it's nice and easy to read. Uh, let's take out the breakpoint because we're not going to worry about that just for now. So we'll take out the breakpoints and we'll copy all of our settings here. And we go back to our uh, editor. We're going to set our settings to be custom and paste our JSON object into the settings. Now we've got exactly the same settings we had by using the UI, but we're just using a JSON object instead. Now, the reason I've done this is we need to change one setting that's not available in Bricks, uh, which is in the options, it's this update on move option. You can get this from going to splyjs.com and having a look there. But this update on move, what it does is by default, um, the splide will add the active class after an element has transitioned. What this does is it tells it to add the active class before the element transitions. So what we want to do because we're going to activate some CSS while it's transitioning. So we're going to copy that there, back to here, and we're going to add that to the end and set that true. Okay. Now for the moment, so I can see what I'm working with. In fact, I just messed that up. Uh, what I'm working on, I'm going to turn off the autoplay by setting that to false, so I can see what I'm working with. Okay. Now, what we want to do is inspect the first element there. And what we see is, our, because we made our image a figure, we got a figure that's, that's uh, enclosing our image or wrapping our image. So we can use that by uh, setting our overflow to hidden on the figure and scaling the image inside of it so it won't go outside of that figure. And that's what we're going to do with our CSS. If we go up to the actual slide that's active, we can see the classes here that we need is a splide slide and the is active. Okay, I'm going to copy those. Come back to our builder here. I'm going to set that back to true. I'm going to create some CSS now. So on the Ken Burns class, select our CSS. And we're going to add some CSS here, which will target when we're active. So I'm going to make that a class. So we're going to dot. And because these two have to be on the same element, we remove the space and replace that with the dot. So that's basically when our Ken Burns is followed by a splide slide with an is active uh, class on the same element. OK, that's what we want to target. OK, now we're going to do some more CSS here. So I like using variables for my CSS transitions. It just makes it easy to manage. So I'm just going to set my uh, image. So I'll just call this transition of uh, all. Uh, we'll make it the same as the transition of the um, 
the uh, CSS transition for the slide. Uh, we're gonna. This is for our scale we're going to use. So it's all seven seconds, and we just put ease on there. Okay, and then we're going to create a another one which is image image scale of one, and then we're going to do image scale active of we'll say one point two. So we're going to scale by one point two. Uh, and down here, we're going to grab both of those variables there. Come down to our, when it's active, we want our image scale to be the same as image scale active. Okay, bit of a typo there. Okay, so what we're saying is that when our Ken Burns has a slide, slide that is active, we want to set our image scale to the active state. By doing this, we can just change variables up here, not look for them in the CSS, but we just change everything in this one declaration up the top here. All right, so let's make that actually work. So first thing we need to do is make our image, which is our bigger set to an overflow of hidden okay and then we want to take the same selector which will be the bigger and we want to target the image element inside that figure see our transition to the variable of transition And we want to set our scale to a variable of image scale. All right, there we go. We've got a scaling image, almost a Ken Burns type effect, right? So let's have a look on the front end. There we go. So it's scaling, it's easing out. Yes, there the next one comes in. Okay, that's pretty much it. That's all we need to do. We can now turn off our um, you know, options. We can set our... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where are we? Looking for it, looking for it, looking for it. Arrows, pagination, false. Okay, turn off the pagination arrow, uh, dots down the bottom. Um, ooh, it does some weird things there. Okay, uh, that's all we need. That's all we need. Save that. Now we have no pagination. Type. We can still use our mouse to slide through those, but by default, it's just going to transition through them. All right, now let's look at what else we can do here. Let's look at our CSS again. What if we want to transition out differently? I'm going to set our transition uh, inactive to all you can change the all to what we're only using the scale at the moment so let's do this over three seconds is in huh? Now, what we're going to do now is, so that's on the image, the transition. So we're going to take this rule. Oops. Mouse is doing some strange things here. And we're going to say when our splide is not, not is active, we want to then take these two rules here. And we want to set the transition to be, this is just a, you can do whatever you like, but I'm just showing you that you can actually play around with these and make the effects, exactly the effects that you want. Let's see what effect that had. It's doing weird things in bricks. I might just refresh bricks. But here it is there. So it scales in. Then it'll scale down quickly, but then just sit there and disappear. Scales out, 
Oops. Scales in quickly. So we've changed the effect. There you go. So that's it. So it's really, really powerful that the fact that in this builder here, um, you can set up your options using the UI, so using the default UI, grab those options, translate them back to having the uh, double quotes, paste it into custom and just do whatever you, whatever you like. And then in your CSS, basically just target the uh, what happens when the slide is active or what happens when it's not active. I think that's a really cool way of doing it. It means you don't need additional plugins. You've got complete control over how this works. I like it. Um, if you like it, let me know. Hit the subscribe, hit the like. Thanks, guys.